Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 7 talking about testing AI based systems as an overview and we are going to look forward to the next segment today which is 7.2 the test levels for the AI based systems. Well, to talk about the test levels for AI-based system, of course, uh, it's in continuation with what we have already covered in foundation. There are several levels uh, which we covered as a part of fundamentals that uh, are covered under functional levels. So we will be looking forward to similarly have the understanding of what are the unique levels to that of the AI-based system and what are some of the common levels which are certainly repeated right from the foundations. So the very first introduction given here to you is AI based systems typically comprises of both AI and on non AI components. The non AI components can be tested using conventional approaches what we have discussed in the ISTQB foundation level. While AI components and system containing AI components may need to be tested differently in some respects as we will be discussing below. Now for all the test levels that include the testing of AI components, it is important for the testing to be closely supported by data engineers and scientists and domain experts. A major difference from the test levels used for conventional software is inclusion of two new specialized test levels to explicitly handle the testing of the input data and the models used in AI based systems. Most of this section is applicable to all the AI based systems, although some parts are efficiently focused on the ML. So in this particular segment, we are just trying to introduce you that AI com consists of two major parts of it. Of course, AI based systems do have some non AI components, which will be tested uh, just all us as usual as the conventional way. But of course, the AI based systems are certainly tested with unique approach and different levels which are designed specially for them. Let's get going and understand more about these levels. Well, the number one level or the very first level specific to AI based system is input data testing. Now input data testing, of course, as the name suggests, we're talking about the data sets applying to the AI based system and we are looking forward to test the system. The objective of input data tes testing is to ensure that the data used by the system for training and prediction is of the highest quality. It includes the following that is reviews, statistical techniques, which means testing data for bias, EDA for the training data, static and dynamic testing of the data pipeline. Put together, there are a lot many things for you, which we will be looking forward to certainly uncover related to AI based systems by pro providing the right set of data and the data can also be reviewed before it is being used and there are certainly static and dynamic testing for these data pipelines because it is very very crucial if AI systems do not have the appropriate test data certainly the AI based system may not behave as expected. The data pipeline typically comprises of several components performing data preparation and the testing of these components includes both component testing as well as integration testing. The data pipeline for training may be quote, quite different from the data pipeline used for support operational predictions. So of course the data are certainly different and we have covered all these information in chapter four already and we can correlate to that of our understanding from there. Now the data pipeline for training are certainly different than that of the operational support. For training, the data pipeline can be considered a prototype compared to the fully engineered automated version used operationally. For this reason, the testing of these two versions of the data pipeline may be quite distinct. However, testing the functional equivalence of the two version should also be considered. To so put together the data sets what we really have are very very crucial and they need to be tested specially separately independently to make sure that you have the right and appropriate set of data for you in order to test an AI based system. So that becomes one important distinct level particularly for AI based systems. Well, another specific one which is only for ML models and it is called as ML model testing. The objective of ML model testing is to ensure that the selected model meets any performance criteria that have been specified. Now this includes 
ML functional performance criteria, which we have already covered in chapter 5, and ML non-functional acceptance criteria that are appropriate for the model in isolation, such as speed of training, speed of prediction, computing resource used, adaptability, and transparency. ML model testing also aims to determine the choice of ML framework, algorithm, model, model settings, and hyperparameters is as close to optimal as possible. Where appropriate, ML model testing may also include testing to achieve white box criteria, which we will we have covered in the previous chapter too, and the selected model is later integrated with other components, AI and non-AI. So put together, of course, MLs are another critical part of this AI-based system which drives the entire execution and certainly decides what would be the outcome, so they equally need to be tested. If we talk about the ML workflow, that has covered a phase there where we do evaluation and testing of ML models. And this is what that level which is referring to, testing of ML models for their respective outcomes and behaviors. Talking about the next one, component testing, and here they just tell you one single line to talk about it, that is component testing is a conventional test level which is applicable to any non uh, any non model component such as user interfaces and communication components so that means the component testing is exactly same as the ISTQB foundation level and there is no difference in definition or any kind of characteristics of that whereas component testing is also known as unit testing well talking about the next level what we do consider from conventional levels are component integration testing. From the basic definitions, component integration testing is all about interfaces between components. Now, component integration testing is a conventional test level which is conducted to ensure that the system components, which is both AI and non-AI, interact correctly. It tests that the inputs from the data pipeline are received as expected by the model and that any predictions produced by the model are exchanged with the relevant system components. For example, use the user interface and used correctly by them for sure. Where AI is provided as a service, which we have certainly discussed in earlier chapters, that is chapter one, it is normally to perform API testing of the provider service as part of the component integration testing. So here the communications, what we are referring to or the interfaces we are referring to is between the AI and the non-AI components and these interfaces can also be related to the AI and the ML different parts of the overall system. So of course we need to make sure that this particular communications are working perfectly and that's how the input and outputs are being defined. Including, we are also referring to the interfaces which do happen in form of APIs, which is application programming interface, when we talk about AI is being provided as a service to the other products. Well, the next level which we have for us is system testing, which is a very, very standard model or level of testing which should be conducted in order to test the whole system and also targets, targets a lot of product risk related items, of course, the environment related factors in this particular level. So system testing is conventional test level again, which is conducted to ensure that the complete system of integrated components, that is AI and non-AI, performs as expected from both functional and non-functional viewpoints in a test environment that is closely representative of the operational environment. So environment factor is perfectly getting uh, evaluated here and also does take care of the functional and non-functional viewpoint as the whole system is being tested here. Depending on the system, this is testing may take the form of field trials in the expected operational environment or testing within a simulator, which is like if the test scenarios are hazardous or difficult to replicate in an operational environment, we would make use of simulators to do the same. During system testing, the ML functional performance criteria are retested to ensure that the test results from the initial ML model testing are not adversely affected when the model is embedded within a complete system. Of course, the initial testing of performance matrices happen at the ML model testing level, and certainly after that when the system is completely integrated together as a whole system, 
we do measure them once again. This testing is especially important when where the AI component has been deliberately changed. It's not necessary if it does not change deliberately, but if it does, you need to make sure that you are conducting it from a point of regression to make sure that they are still working fine. System testing is also the test level in which many of the non-functional requirements for the system are tested. For example, adversarial testing may be performed to test for robustness and the system may be tested for explainability where appropriate interfaces with hardware component may be tested as part of system testing too. So whatever is going to be the final outcome of this entire preparation is going to be considered as a part of the system testing. And of course, if there's any other level of testing or any other attribute which you think could be adversely affected by the overall system integration, then should be measured at this point of time. Last but not the least, of course, uh, we do have a level of uh, acceptance testing. And of course, acceptance testing is the final level by the uh, business to accept the product. And that's what we are looking at. Same here. Acceptance testing is a conventional test level again and is used to determine whether the complete system is acceptable to the customer. For AI-based systems, the definition of acceptance criteria can be challenging and we'll be talking about acceptance criteria in our next chapter. Where AI is provided as a service, acceptance testing may be needed to determine the suitability of the service for the intended system and whether, for example, ML functional, ML functional performance criteria have been sufficiently achieved. So more, more importantly, what we are trying to refer here is that the these uh, AI-based systems would sometimes be used as an embedded part of the other application where it is provided as a service, then it becomes very crucial to, sure, to be sure about whether this particular system gets embedded and the acceptance criteria of the other system, the suitability of that is achieved or not, or whether it is enough to go ahead and integrate together and start working as a single unit or not. And this is where acceptance testing would play a crucial role. But we do have challenges to define acceptance criteria in that constraint. We will look into that when we come to chapter eight. Well, anyways, that's all from this particular tutorial team that covers all the levels what we generally conduct. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.